unboxing the Moldswa Lite 2 box. On the first layer, there are a user manual, quick start guide, Moldswa Lite 2 gimbal, camera mounting plate, top handle, intelligent battery, battery charger, and wireless thumb controller. On the bottom layer, there's a stand, handlebar, cables, and a tool bag. USB control for Canon DSLR. Connect the Canon camera with the gimbal. USB control for Sony A-Series. Connect Sony cameras with the gimbal. USB control for Panasonic GH4. Connect the Panasonic GH4, GH3, and Blackmagic Design cameras. Micro USB upgrading. Connect the gimbal with the computer to upgrade firmware and charge the wireless thumb controller. The tool bag contains an L2.0, L2.5, L3.0 Allen wrenches, two follow focus assembly, lens support, and a quarter inch screw. Put the stand on a horizontal tabletop. Pull the top arms upwards until the locking knobs bounces. Pull the upper arms outwards till the lower legs expand to the maximum. Loosen the locking knob on the upper arms to stretch the stand. Then tighten the locking knob. Place the handlebar onto the stand, turn downwards the side handle 90 degrees, and then tighten the lock knob. Insert the top handle into the mounting hole in the handlebar, and then tighten the lock knob. Slide the handlebar horizontally into the gimbal and the pan axis and tighten the lock knob. To install the Mozwa Intelligent Battery, slide it directly into the gimbal and then slide down until the lock pin is secured. There are two different screws in the mounting plate, a quarter inch and a three eighth. Choose the correct screw hole according to your camera's configuration. Change the horizontal position of the camera on the mounting plate to make sure it's centered. Slide the mounting plate onto the gimbal, then balance the camera on the gimbal and tighten the lock knob. If the mounting plate does not work properly, use the M3 wrench to tighten the screw below the handle. Loosen the lock knob on the accessory mount on the wireless thumb controller and clamp it on the right side of the handlebar where it's easy to operate the joystick. Then tighten the lock knob. Choosing the proper cable according to your camera type, plug micro USB in the USB port of the power distribution unit and plug the other end into the camera port. To balance the tilt axis, first rotate the camera lens 45 degrees upwards or downwards to make sure the camera keeps level. If the camera lens is front heavy, please loosen the left side clamp. Move backwards the mounting plate until the camera points forwards when released. Then close the slide clamp. If the camera lens is back heavy, please loosen the left side clamp and move forward the mounting plate until the camera points forwards when released. Then secure the clamp. If the camera can't stay in the position where you're rotated, loosen the two lock knobs and slide the camera up on the vertical bars. Tighten the lock knobs. If the measurement marks is excessively high, the camera will rotate down to the gimbal. Please slide the camera back down on the vertical bars and then tighten the lock knobs. When proper balance is achieved, you can rotate the camera to any tilt angle and it will stay in that position. When the tilt axis is balanced, you can start to balance the roll axis. Loosen the two lock knobs to the side of the camera's left or right. If the camera is too heavy on the left side, please move right until the roll axis remains level. Then tighten the lock knobs. If the camera is too heavy on the right side, please move left until the roll axis remains level, then tighten the lock knobs. When the roll axis is properly balanced, the camera will not fall to the right or left. Pull the Mozo Light 2 and rotate the gimbal to make one side higher than the other. If the back position near the battery rotates the higher position to the lower position, it means the gimbal is too back heavy. 
please loosen the lock knob and move the body forwards until the pan axis stays still when released. If the camera rotates from the higher position to the lower position, it means the gimbal is too front heavy. Please place the gimbal onto the stand and loosen the lock knob above the main board. Move the body backwards until the pan axis stays still when released. When the gimbal will not rotate from the higher position to lower position, pan axis balance is finished. Press the red button on the intelligent battery to turn on the Morzoi Light 2. To check the current battery level, press the red button when it turns off. Each blue light indicates 20% of power. The battery needs to be charged when the last small light blinks. If all five lights blink after a long press and no power is being supplied to the gimbal, you need to charge the battery immediately. On the front, there is an OA LED screen, joystick, speed button, the roller is on the back of the thumb controller. The OLED screen interface can display the connecting state, gimbal battery level, thumb controller battery level, recording state, focus speed, gimbal speed, and follow mode. The signal icon shows the connecting state. There will be an X above the signal icon when connecting fails. The battery icon is in black when fully charged. Otherwise, it's in white. Use the joystick to control the gimbal movement, horizontal movement control the pan axis, and select projects. Moving leftwards will return you to the previous menu. Moving rightwards confirms your selection. A long press will turn the power on or off. A single press will start or stop a recording. A long press will change the speed settings between the gimbal movement and focus control speeds. A single press will change speeds between low, medium, and high. A single press will switch the follow modes between hand follow, tilt follow, and all locked. A long press will bring you to the main menu. It is necessary to pair the Mozua with the thumb controller when you change the thumb controller or Mozua gimbal. Long press option to enter the menu. Then, choose pair and move the joystick rightwards to enter the secondary menu. Move the joystick downwards to choose the yes option and move the joystick rightwards again to enter the pairing mode. Wait for the Mozua to turn on pairing. Install the intelligent battery in the Mozua and the pairing is complete. The screen will display OK for one second if the pairing is successful. It will automatically return to the secondary menu, after which you can go back to the main menu. Mozua can be controlled via the controller, otherwise the screen will continue to show pairing. Because there are different weights and means of controlling the Mozua, Multua needs different parameters to balance itself. After choosing a type of camera, the corresponding parameters must be saved to the Multua. You must keep the power on while operating. Long press the Options button to enter the menu, and choose Camera. Move the joystick rightwards to enter the secondary menu. In this menu, there are various types of cameras. Move the joystick vertically to choose the camera type. Move rightwards to enter the third menu where you can choose the weight of your lens. The weight of your lens is divided into three levels, ultralight, light, and heavy. Choose the option that corresponds to your lens weight and move the joystick rightwards. The screen will display OK for half a second. It will display camera ERR if you choose the wrong type of camera. If this happens, please check the connections between Mozua and the thumb controller and then try again. Long press the Options button to enter the menu. Move the joystick downwards to choose the follow speed. Move the joystick rightwards to enter the speed menu. Vertical movements of the joystick to choose the speed level, low, medium, high if you want. Then move the joystick rightwards to save your choice. The OLED display will show OK after saving successfully. Move the joystick upwards, downwards, rightwards, and leftwards to control any one of the gimbal's axes. The operation modes can be set freely by custom. Long press the Options button to enter the menu. Move the joystick downwards to choose Habit. Then, move the joystick rightwards to enter the list of custom hardware. Choose Joystick, and then move rightward. Up-down represents moving the joystick upwards or downwards. Left-right represents moving the joystick leftwards or rightwards. 
Left-right is also used to remap the left and right of the joystick. You are able to choose the directions that you need to be remapped. Move the joystick rightwards to choose the gimbal's axis. After completing the remapping, move the joystick and the corresponding power motor will follow. The Moldua Lite 2 has pan mode, tilt mode, pan and tilt mode, all lock mode. The Moldua Lite 2 defaults to pan mode after it's turned on. The thumb controller screen will show the follow mode as yaw. Just rotate the handlebar and the gimbal pan axis will follow. Single press the options button. The thumb controller screen will show the follow mode as pit. The follow mode switches to tilt mode. Move the handlebar up and down the tilt axis will follow. Single press the options button. The thumb controller screen will display the follow mode as yaw pit. The follow mode switches to pan and tilt mode. Rotate the handlebar up and down, left and right. The pan and tilt axis will follow. Single press the options button. The thumb controller screen will display the follow mode as all lock. The follow mode switches to all lock mode. Rotate the handlebar up and down, or left and right. The pan and tilt axis will remain in a fixed position. Single press options again. It goes back to the pan mode. There are three operation modes. Underslung mode, briefcase mode, and upright mode. The underslung mode is the standard mode. You can hold the handles with both hands, or grip the top bar with a single hand. This mode is convenient for picking up and storing the gimbal on the stand, as well as for operating the wireless thumb controller. To enter briefcase mode, start with the Moltois Lite 2 in the underslung mode. Then, rotate it upwards by 90 degrees until the tilt axis stands on the pan axis. Next, rotate one handlebar by 90 degrees so that the handlebars are right on top of one another. Briefcase mode reduces the gimbal to its smallest size, making it perfect for shooting in narrow spaces. To enter upright mode, rotate the Moltois Lite 2 upwards by 180 degrees so that the handlebar is right below the camera. In the upright mode, the camera position is higher than normal mode, which makes it easier for you to view the camera screen. This mode will also help you reach a higher shooting angle. The Moltois Assistant for Windows and Mac systems helps you adjust parameters and upgrade the firmware. After turning on the Moltua Lite 2 and plugging in the USB cable, the Moltua app will open the interface for adjusting parameters such as sensor calibration and parameter tuning. Turn on the gimbal after setting up the Moltua Lite 2. Then, connect the gimbal to the computer with a micro USB cable to start the Moltua Assistant software. Proceed to the parameter adjustment section. Check the box, Turn Off Motor, to turn off all three motors. Place the Moltua light on a sturdy surface and wait for the gimbal to become stationary. Click on Sensor Calibrate. The gyro calibration window will pop up. Click on Start Calibrate to start the calibration. After the calibration is complete, the Moltua assistant will show Calibration OK. Now you may restart the Moltua. Click Exit to close the gyro calibration pop-up window and exit the calibration state. Place the Moltois Lite 2 back on the stand, uncheck Turn Off Motor, and click the Save button, then restart the Moltois Lite 2. Remember, the motors will not work properly if you save the data without unchecking Turn Off Motor. You are allowed to adjust other parameters that best suits your gimbal. After you make an adjustment, click the blank space on the interface or click Enter. The parameter will be automatically written to the Moltua Lite 2. You should now be able to see how the gimbal responds. When all of your desired adjustments are completed, click the Save button to make the changes permanent. Otherwise, they will remain in effect only until you restart, and then the last save values will be re-established. First, connect the gimbal to a PC or a Mac through the USB cable. Then, turn on the Moltua Lite 2. It will enter the firmware upgrade mode. Choose the correct version and click the upgrade button. The Moltua Assistant will then download the firmware from the server and automatically upgrade. First, install the lens support 
make sure the gimbal is well balanced. Then, turn on the Mozart Light 2. Next, choose the correct camera and lens type via the thumb controller. Finally, use the Mozart Assistant software for Windows or Mac to adjust the parameters and lower the motor power. You cannot balance the gimbal when the camera is excessively high. To balance the gimbal, lower the measurement marks on the vertical bars to the minimum. The follow focus rods can be used as extension arms to elongate the vertical bars. Take out the follow focus rods from the tool bag and remove the red end caps. Then, attach them to the ends of the vertical bars and reaffix the red caps. To use this function, three requirements must be met. The thumb controller must be properly paired with the gimbal and able to control the gimbal's movement. The camera type you used must be the same one you selected via the thumb controller, and the data must be successfully written to the gimbal. The correct cable must be used to connect the gimbal to the camera. If the thumb controller cannot control the camera's recording function, review these three key requirements. Try several camera types to make sure the data has been written successfully to the gimbal, even if it gives you an okay response the first time. After choosing the correct camera type, restart the gimbal and retest the function.